Hello Silent Hill fans and welcome back. If you are new or coming back, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to do so and I appreciate you. The purpose of my last video was to provide a more positive and hopeful perspective for Silent Hill 2's remake. The purpose of this video is to expand upon concerns some fans are expressing about Maria and Angela, my thoughts about the gameplay, and suggestions on what would make the game have a bigger impact upon release. A person by the name of Enter the Fray one posted a comment with their main point essentially being that the changes to Maria's look will affect the story of the remake. And for my previous video, I stated that the story was the main factor in the remake's success. He explained how Maria being sexually alluring is integral to her character and thus a driving element of the story for the player. This is true to some degree. When I finally played Silent Hill 2, I was quick to pick up on the sexual appeal of Maria. I would like to argue that her outfit is not the driving element that conveys to the player what was going on with James Sunderland in his pursuit to find Mary. The two driving elements and what I believe to be the most important to Maria's connection to James were her physical and verbal actions. Maria's appearance in the original game provided players initially with some foreshadow as to what was going on psychologically within James. My problem with other side's argument for Maria's appearance change is the way they are conveying it as if it is the end all be all. I also disagree that the appearance change will affect the story to the extreme the other side is taking it. Based on at least my experience with playing Silent Hill 2 for the first time, I did not have to rely on Maria's appearance to understand what really happened to James. It was an interesting detail, but not the driving factor to understand the story. The emphasis on who Maria was to James was shown by how she acted around him as well as what was said to him, which ties into the dialogue scenes I will briefly mention. With James's first encounter with Maria, she suggests being his girlfriend, and does so in a flirtatious way. In another scene, she helps James search for lore beyond the Heaven's Night Bar. She bends over while looking at James with a smile, then pulls a key from her cleavage, as if to tease him. Lastly, you see two sides of Maria in the gel scene, much deeper into the story. Sato Takayoshi, CG and character artist, talks about Maria in greater detail. He describes her as disturbing and sometimes cute. Maria was intentionally made less sexually appealing in the jail scene because she was supposed to have a disturbing presence. It had to do with how she acted toward James, both in her physical posture and movements as well as what she said to him. In the remake, we can all agree to some extent that she looks cute. In the beginning of the original, Maria was flirtatious with what she said, seductive in the tone she used and on multiple occasions, sexually suggestive in her mannerisms. But as the game progresses, so do Maria and most characters in the story. The point I am making is not to be misinterpreted as dismissive. I am not dismissing the fact that what she wears is not a part of the story, but rather a slight deviation. What I am suggesting is that if Bloober Team keeps Maria's new look, but nails the other two elements, the story can still be told the same way and have an impact thus being successful as a remake. I would like to make a similar argument for Angela. People are furious with the way she looked and how she sounded in the new trailer. I agree. She looked and sounded completely different minus that outfit she wore. I have read comments about people saying she doesn't look as disheveled, frail, or sick as she did in the original. Although true, I would like to propose a realistic approach to how I see it. Not everyone you see will show based on appearance alone, that they have been sexually and emotionally abused or have dealt with serious trauma. According to a Texas law firm that deals with cases of sexual abuse, there are determining factors which narrow in on personality traits common among all sexually abused victims. Amongst the long list, there are three that stood out to me that Angela exhibited through her actions and words. Emotional instability. A term used to describe people who have difficulty regulating their emotions, resulting in intense, unpredictable, and sometimes rapid changes in mood, thoughts, and feelings. Extreme reactions toward people. These reactions are often fueled by underlying emotions that are difficult to deal with. Anger. A strong feeling of annoyance, displeasure, or hostility. All three of these traits can be seen throughout the game with Angela's character. These traits have nothing to do with appearances. Though some people may show neglect in how they look, not all sexually abused people do and that is the point. Realistically, we do not know what people are going through based on looks alone. I believe it's a strong statement to be made and we cannot fault people for using them, but this is the harsh reality of how characters were 
and are still being portrayed in games and movies today. Walter Lippmann, an American writer, reporter, and political commentator responsible for coining the term stereotype in the modern psychological meaning, once said, It requires wisdom to understand wisdom. The music is nothing if the audience is deaf. Listening is a powerful form of wisdom, and if we do not pay attention to what a person says or how they act, we are deaf from the true meaning of what is happening in real time. The same goes for Angela as an abused and traumatized teenager. Realistically, one cannot tell simply by looking at someone what they have been through. What matters is how that person acts and what they say. Whenever Angela talked in the original, she seemed troubled, lost, confused, nervous, and erratic. The way she sounded almost as sure in the remake trailer makes it more believable for somebody who has been abused both physically and mentally. These are the indicators that people in real life will struggle to see and still do for those people going through the same serious issues as Angela does. Enter the Fray 1 concludes by stating that I do not blame people for being upset about this change and I wish people would stop trying to downplay the significance of this or act like people don't have any right to be annoyed about it. I agree that people have the right to be annoyed. We are all passionate fans. The purpose of my video previously was to provide a more positive and hopeful perspective amongst all negative and destructive things fans are saying. I am also not saying that most fans' opinions are destructive, case in point which is why I'm responding to one viewer's comment who had a valid and justifiable concern. We can be concerned, but we should not be giving up on it. No matter how many times people are let down, it always pays to be positive and hopeful that one day we can be happy once again. This is the winning mindset, and if we score on this one, it will be monumental. It is not fair to the new audience, nor to people who are genuinely excited for this remake, for people to just complain and give up. I do hear and understand the other side's argument. I also have my doubts about the game, but I want to remain positive and hopeful Blooper Team will pull off the remake while remaining faithful to the story, and using the next four months remaining to polish it up and take inputs from fans. One thing I will challenge people who are annoyed is to see how it is possible for the game to still be a success even with these changes. Yes, there are things that have meaning and even nostalgia tied into it. But I am not concerned it will have a huge impact because there are other powerful elements in the game that give players a firm understanding of what is happening. I also challenge those seeing this differently to understand my side. Bloober Team is a fan of Silent Hill. Again, Bloober Team is a fan of Silent Hill just as we are. The original creators wanted to change a lot of aspects of the remake that did not align with the original, and Blue Rope Team stepped in to deny the request, because they wanted to remain as faithful as possible to the original. Faithful is not one-to-one. -one. Through the story, how characters act and what they say, as well as the music and atmosphere, will create a special and new experience for us all. Lastly, if I were to request changes through the polishing stages of the game in these next four months, this is what I would recommend. Bloober Team should create a seamless flow and animation transitions for all character models. That means how they go from walking to running and vice versa. Take Leon and Resident Evil 4 Remake for example. Characters should be able to respond to the physical environment in a realistic way. Not like the awkward running from James and Maria entering the hospital as seen in the gameplay trailer. They should also limit the amount of clipping seen with hit detection on monsters. If Bloober Team decides to go back to Maria's and Angela's original look, I would ask them to also then include the patches on James' jacket. Why not? Another change would be the introduction of the first monster scene. There was no purpose in changing this as the original was more terrifying and nostalgic. Lastly, as a bonus feature, it would be cool to see a live commentator toggle option for New Game Plus, just as they did for the new Alone in the Dark remake. Hello, and welcome to the developer commentary for Alone in the Dark. We knew early on that we wanted to make something special with the Talisman to both pay homage to the original game, but also to get a cool item for the player to... Uh, it ends up being um, a way to open up a gate to other worlds. As well as options for different screens like film grain or gray scale and cinematic mode.
If you stuck around this long, I appreciate your time. Please like, subscribe, and let me know if there are any other topics you would like me to discuss. With that being said, I wish nothing but the best for everyone, and thank you. Could she really be here, waiting for me? Mary died of that damn disease three years ago.